What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I will show you how to enable SSL on PFSense 2.4.4, which is not even released yet, in fact, uh, as of shooting this video in September 2018, but will be released soon, so this video is future-proof, and I will show you how to establish a HTTPS connection with a trusted certificate to your PFSense box, so all your traffic is encrypted, and you can safely work on your PFSense with an HTTPS, or better said, SSL connection. Um, therefore, we need to create three certificates and I will show you exactly how to do that. I will also show you how to implement those certificates in Windows 10 and how to implement them specifically using a Chrome and Firefox because the steps there are a little bit different. So let's get right started. I have uh, Windows 10 VM uh, booted up. Uh, this is very vanilla. I didn't install anything there except Firefox and Google Chrome. And I also have a vanilla PFSense 2.4.4 running in the background to which we will log in right now. The default IP of the PFSense is 192.168.1.1. Let's click on advanced and add a security exception for now. Confirm that and log in with admin and the default password and you can see here that the connection is not secure and what we want to achieve is to make this connection here secure all right let's sign in that obviously was the wrong password so i probably changed it already let's see all right that looks much better so you can see this is pfsense 2.4.4 the development version still um, but I doubt that much will still change until the final release is available. Um, so nothing will change on the steps that you have to do on your own PFSense box. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a new root certificate authority. So go to uh, system, or maybe I was a bit fast system, and uh, go to certificate manager. And then you want to make sure you are on the CAs uh, field in here and you simply click on add. Give it a descriptive name. I will give it the name simply COSAC root CA. And then we want to choose to create an internal certificate authority. We leave everything on default. You could, if you wanted to, uh, put up the digest algorithm to SHA 512, but SHA 265, uh, 265 is pretty fine so we can leave that on default a the common name we also want to name that exactly as that is on top so we just copy that uh, for country code uh, put whatever you want there if you want to put anything I don't think you have to because it's optional I will just fill it in for good measure organization COSEC and organization you're gonna do whatever who cares okay click on save and then go ahead and click on add once more. Now we are going to create the sub certificate authority. I will explain that to you later. So we call that COSEC sub CA. You can already go ahead and copy that name. And then you want to choose create an intermediate certificate authority. We need this because the Windows, because that's basically how the Windows um, trust route is working and I showed it to you in a second. All right, uh, then the sign-in certificate authority in this case will be our COSEC root CA that we just created before this one. This stuff we're gonna leave as it is. The common name will also be COSEC sub CA, same like above. And then again, we're gonna fill that shit out here. Uh, State of province, Munich, COSEC, and save. All right, guys, so you can see we now have a root certificate authority and a sub certificate authority. You go ahead and download both of them. So click on the export CA sign here and click on save file for both of their certificate authorities. Next, we're going to create a certificate. So click on certificates, click on add slash sign, and then you want to create an internal certificate. So now it's very important uh, that you put the uh, 
descriptive name not so much but the common name has to be the name or the FQDN of your PFSense box. To find that out which FQDN your PFSense box has is simply to go to system and go to general setup and you see here my host name is PFSense minus one and the domain is local domain. So the full name would be in that case, I'll just show you that here. The full name would be pfsense1.localdomain. So if you have just a pfsense box in your home, you probably will also be in a local domain. So this is basically host name, then comes a dot, and then comes whatever is written on a domain. But uh, I will change one thing first, because uh, I know that pfsense or that it can cause problems because the host name is case sensitive and it will cause a problem with the certificate if you import it. So I will just quickly rename my box to pfsense1 with all uh, small letters. So it's, as I said, it's case sensitive, be aware of that. So I just quickly wanna save that here. So make sure if you have uppercase letters in uh, your host name um, that you put them lowercase just to avoid failure. Okay, so now you can see my host name is pfsense1 and the domain is local domain. Let's go back to system certificate manager, certificates, click on add and then we are going to create an internal certificate again and we just name it uh, descriptive name pfsense1.local uh, domain I think the descriptive name doesn't have to be your host name it can be anything but uh, the important part is that you put it in common name this needs to be your FQDN um, the certificate authority will be still the root certificate authority Actually, it will be the sub certificate authority. Sorry, I just uh, I confused that. Um, uh, so the COSEC sub CA, and uh, the rest will be same as it was before. So SHA two five six, and your date, uh, your location is still here. And then you have to still scroll down to certificate attributes. And now important again is to put the alternative names in here. So once you put FQDN or host name and you put again your FQDN right here and then you put, uh, you click on add and you want to put here IP address and you want to put there the IP address of your PFSense box. So what this does is basically if you only put the FQDN, the, sec the uh, connection will be only secure when you connect or open your web interface via its FQDN and not via IP. So if you go via IP, it will still be not uh, secure. So therefore you put the IP address here, which then uh, means that both the FQDN and the IP address access will be secured. All right, and uh, the last thing we're going to do certificate type is server certificate. Double check if you have everything correct and especially the part with the common name. I cannot stress this enough. This has to be your FQDN. All right, click on save. And then you can see your pfsense1.local domain certificate showing up there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to import uh, the certificate into our Windows root. Um, for Firefox, you could go ahead and only import it in Firefox, but we go first the, over the Chrome method. So go to settings. So hit the Windows key here and go to the settings, Windows settings, and then find settings. Just put their certificate and it show up. It should show up. Yeah, manage computer certificates. Open that one. Let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, and what you want is you go down to trusted root certification authorities and to certificates. Then you click somewhere where there's an empty space, you go to all tasks to import, click on next, browse, and then go to your downloads folder and select the root certificate authority. Click on next, leave that on trusted root certification authorities, click on next click on finish and the import was successful.
Next, we are going to also import the sub CA and for that we have to go to the intermediate certification authorities tab right here and also go to certificates. Right click to an empty space again, go to all tasks import, next browse and select the sub CA, next, next, next and ok. So now we have both certificates installed here. We can double click it and if we go to certification path you can now see that uh, they are basically linked together and both certificates are ok. Alright, ok, now we are going to import it to Firefox, so open Firefox. Obviously if you only use Chrome you can skip this step, it will be very quick. Just open up Firefox, go to the uh, dots or the three lines up here, go to options. Go to privacy and security, scroll down all the way to the bottom, click on view certificates and here we only need to import the root CA, so go to downloads, go to root CA, open it, check both of those boxes, click on OK, click on OK and that's it for Firefox. Alright, final steps are coming, let's get back to our PFSense, the connection will not be secured yet which is perfectly normal because we haven't changed it. All right, I log in again. We haven't changed the certificate that is used for the web interface. Okay, so I want to point out one thing and that is in case something goes wrong, we want to have a fallback in place. Our fallback will be basically three things that we have in uh, our pocket to use in case something goes wrong. So first we are going to diagnostics and we are going to backup and restore. We select backup area all. We select encryption, we enter a password for our backup, be sure to remember it or write it down and we click on download. So in the worst case we can always go back to a working state because we have a backup in place. And the next thing we are going to do is we go to system and advanced and we scroll down to secure shell and we are going to enable secure shell access. We leave it on password so the reason to do that is because if you run an older version of Firefox or uh, Chrome and then I run here because I run the newest versions. It might be possible that uh, the certificate is not compatible with your old version and you will not be able to access the web interface anymore. So I recommend you to use an up-to-date version of either Chrome or Firefox while creating the certificates. And that's the point that we enable the secure shell server so that in case our or in case you cannot access the web interface anymore, you have a way to get back into PFSense and restore the configuration or restore the old uh, web interface certificate. Uh, leave the port on default. And if your PFSense is a physical box and has a serial port, I also recommend you to enable the serial terminal, especially if your box is just lying around in your own home and not in a corporate environment, you can leave that serial terminal, um, basically, you can leave it uh, checked at all times. After the web configuration is done or after we're done with the configuration everything works you could go ahead and uh, disable SSH again but um, also in your home network it's fine to leave it uh, to leave it ticked. Okay click on save. So we have a few security measures in place in case anything goes wrong. Good, then we stay on this page and we make sure that HTTPS is selected here and then we choose SSL certificate and we change it to our newly created pfsense1.local domain certificate that we created earlier. Okay, we click on save. And now we are going to close our browser and we're gonna first try it with Firefox. Now everything should be in place and we should get a secure connection. And voila, we have a secure connection with the IP address and pretty sure we will have a secure connection also with our FQDN. 
So let's also try that in Chrome. 192.168.1.1 and the, sec the connection is secure. Same thing, pfsense1.local domain. And also this, this connection is secure. So you can see it's not that hard to set up a secure connection. It takes a few steps, but once you have it in place um, and you have your certificates created, every time you use a new computer, you just download the certificates once and you install them on your computer like I showed you, which is done in a couple of steps and you are good to go. Okay guys, that concludes this tutorial. If you liked that video and you want more PFSense tutorials in the future, subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and also I will link the written tutorial to this video in the description below, which you can check out on cosec.com in case you prefer a written article. See you in the next one guys, thank you for watching.